Hello everyone, this is Chantelle, and even though it is the end of November, we still have some work to do in the garden. Behind me I have some raised beds that need to be cleaned up and I need to get them ready for the winter. So I will take you along with me on that. So let's go ahead and start. In that bed right there I have some things that need to be taken out and thrown out, some seeds that need to be collected, and some things that need to stay right there where they are. Things like this collard green, for example, is infested with pests, so I'm not going to compost it. Instead, I'm going to cut it down right below the surface of the soil, and I'm going to toss the tops and give them to the chickens. So the chickens will enjoy the greens, and the roots will stay in the ground and decompose throughout the winter. The bugs will eat them, and the worms will eat them, and they will also decompose because of the bacteria that's in the soil. So that will provide some nutrients for the soil. like this one has a really big stalk at the bottom. There we go. Burying the, the stem with the soil helps it decompose a lot faster because this way the worms and other bugs can get to it because it's protected by the soil. In this bed also I have the same problem with the cabbage and the cauliflower so I'm going to take them out of the bed and try my best not to shake them so that uh, the least amount of insects would fall into the bed and hopefully none. <laughs> so I will take all of these out and put them with the, with the collard greens and take them to the chickens. take them about two days to go through this pile so this should keep them entertained for now. Things like this sweet alyssum over here that's covering this whole bed are a little bit weedy. Uh, not that I don't like sweet alyssum, I would love for this whole vegetable garden to be filled with, filled with it but I do want food and that's the main goal of this garden. We plant things like sweet alyssum to deter certain types of insects and this has helped a lot and now it's done it's done blooming it's dead so it's time to take it out I'm sure that it would have seeded itself in this bed and hopefully next spring I would see it coming back if not I'll plant some sweet alyssum 
I will be planting anyways some sweet alyssum just in case if this does not seed itself over here. Things like this sweet alyssum I will not direct compost. Instead I have a giant compost pile at the end of the vegetable garden and I will be taking these and putting them in there. I will I encourage everyone to do direct composting but there are cer certain types of things that you cannot do in direct composting and that's this is the things that are like weeds that have seeds in them or weeds that do spread by roots even if you pulled their roots they would come back up again. Uh, this now is not going to spread by roots because this is an annual but it will seed itself heavily in here because of all the seeds that are available in here. I should probably harvest some of its seeds before I dump it. I'll probably clip some of them and take them inside and harvest their seeds uh, from like th three plants because you want diverse genetics. Uh, but the rest of it is just gonna go into my big compost pile and once we get there I'll talk a little bit more about that. have scissors with me so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to rip them out here also looks healthy so I'm choosing plants that have really big seeds on them and big and big bundles of flower because that's the kind of genetics that I want the bees love this they were all over it, especially when the weather cooled down drastically and there were no other flowers around, the sweet alyssum were still going and that's all the bees had for foraging. I took from about four. I'm not gonna take too much of these because they don't have as uh, good F genetics as the two that I picked from previously. So this bed is clean. All you see right here is the miner's lettuce and these miner's lettuce seeded themselves from the ones that I planted in here in the spring and we have been having temperatures at night below 18 degrees Fahrenheit and they are still going. So I'm just gonna let them go. Uh, if they give us anything that's great. If not uh, they'll just die back and provide the soil with some nitrogen. And behind me right there is the sweet alyssum pile. It's sitting over the wheelbarrow and I have the loppers over it to keep it from toppling over because the sweet alyssum are very poofy and super light. So I'm afraid they're going to topple over when I am trying to take the uh, when I'm trying to take them over to the compost pile. Uh, so let's go ahead and take it to the compost to the compost pile. <laughs> this giant mountain right here is the compost pile and it actually was a lot higher than this, but as things decompose, it goes down. So in here I have everything that from weeds to vegetable leafy greens that I do not want in the garden to um, 
sticks and sometimes even branches uh, and I put them all in here and what I do is I layer them like uh, lasagna <laughs> and I have layers of brown and then layers of green and by brown I mean things like sticks or branches and cardboard maybe or paper towels or whatever it is I don't put paper towels in here because I put them in my and directly in the beds uh, but if you want you could do that also and uh, so and and uh, also leaves that have fallen off the trees so all these would be your brown uh, that is going to provide the carbon and then on top of that layer I would put the greens which are maybe grass clippings or uh, things like uh, the sweet alyssum that I have with me over here uh, or uh, tomato plants that I didn't necessarily think that they're healthy and I'm not so sure about putting them in the garden a lot of things that could potentially introduce disease or um, uh, or insects into the soil so this method over here the pile sort of heats up it gets watered by the rain and the snow that we get and by the end of uh, the winter uh, in the spring it should be somewhat ready it's not going to be completely ready maybe parts of it are going to be ready uh, and I would be able to use it as uh, compost and put it in the beds. What I probably would do is, instead is have it sit in there for two years so that it, could, it would have the um, it would have the ability to decompose fully. So right now we are going to put the sweet alyssum in that pile. The next the next layer that's going to be is going to be brown. So you just keep layering, layering that up and uh, the pile would decompose on its own. You don't have to till it unless you want it to decompose quickly and you want the pile to heat up. Uh, and But what's inside the pile is going to naturally heat up because it's, go it's protected and uh, it's going to have uh, the all the uh, it's sitting on the soil also so a lot of the bacteria from the soil and and also the worms that are just going to go up and start eating up those things are going to help this pile decompose a lot faster like it's starting to get dark so I better hurry up and finish what I need to do. Any structures like this willow fence over here has to be taken down because the weather that we have over here we live in zone 5 so we do get a lot of snow and rain and wind uh, and the UV rays from the sun that's all going to impact this fence and it's going to uh, probably break it before the next season if I don't take it out of the ground. I probably won't be able to do that today even though the soil is so loose and not frozen I probably should at least take it out of the ground and um, so I have to put it away for the winter and the next season I would bring it out and use it again so that I w it would be usable and if you have any structures like that that you think are going to break down throughout the winter you're better off taking them out from the garden now and storing, storing them away so that you don't have to do that purchase again the next season at least that can last you for a few seasons instead of just one season and you'll be thankful that you did that especially in today's economy that things are just getting too pricey we want to be able at least to save in some areas so that when we do need something we can spend that money on it instead of just having to buy more fences like this <laughs>
Look at that, I was actually able to uh, kind of accordion it in. <laughs> so I probably can put it away now. I'm just gonna put it on the wheelbarrow for now. Things like this metal, also this metal hoop, I like to take out of the soil, even though it is galvanized and it's less, it's, uh, less likely to rust. I want to take it out of the soil because the less it is exposed to moisture and the elements, it is less likely to start rusting because even though it is galvanized it can still rust if some of that material I'm not sure how galvanized metals are made but I assume that they are coated with some type of thing that protects them from rusting uh, and if I'm correct then if that mater material begins to decay then the metal would start to rust so I like to take these out also this plant right here this is foxglove I planted this whole row over here with foxglove and unfortunately only one of them came up. This type of foxglove that I have over here uh, produces flower on the first season. I know it is dark so it's hard for you guys to see. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it here and let it uh, hopefully seed itself into this garden. And next year when it does seed itself and I see that some plants are growing, then in the spring I can get them out and plant them in the apiary because that was my original plan. I wanted to plant them in the apiary but the apiary is covered with mulch and cardboard and I didn't want to mess up the system that I have over there and dig and cause the grass to grow because that was the first season that I actually had it covered completely and so I wanted to make sure that those seeds are going to hopefully die under the ground uh, that's the plan at least and if not I wanted to make sure that I have something to cover them with and if I were to plant little seedlings in there they would have probably died so if hopefully this foxglove is alive next year so my plan is to transfer it into the apiary garden over there and uh, if I have more babies I'll wait for them to grow up a little bit and put them in that garden as well now I still have some cleaning up in this bed over here to do I have the uh, radishes and the, I think radishes that have uh, seeds on them that I'm going to take and um, take inside so that I can take the seeds away <laughs> my baby's super tired uh, she refused to nap today and uh, uh, I'm going to be leaving this fox glove alone so this is all I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you learned something new. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you are new here, don't forget, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And I will also be leaving a video for you guys to watch on this side this time. No, I can't point with that finger. How do I do that? That, this way, on the corner. That's opposite, that way this side <laughs> okay I figured it out <laughs> I'll leave a video for you on that side so that you can go ahead and watch it and thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye